Hello, and welcome to Most Hall. What's that, vet? Oh, um, I'm not wearing enough black. Wait, two seconds. Hello, and welcome to Most... <sighs> yes, Yvette. Still not enough black. I mean, I got a black t-shirt, I've got a black jumper, I've got black trousers on, black underpants and black socks. What else do you want? They can't see my shoes. <sighs> a black coat. Okay. Hello. And welcome to most f oh, God's sake. Yes, Yvette. R really? A hat? <sighs> welcome to most haunted. Oh. Yes, Yvette, you needy bitch. Do you mean I look like Rob Zombie? Right, I'm off. I'm going home. I quit. I'm off to my Dragula. Beardos, weirdos, boils and ghouls. Hands up, who thought they weren't getting a Beardos, weirdos, boils and ghouls intro there? <laughs> just just a little bit of fun to kick things off because despite what people say, I like to have a bit of fun. So as I said in that weird little intro there, um, some people were like, yeah, it's really cool, but we've always known they were fake, but they've got new content. Why don't you look at the new content? And you have a point. Why don't I look at the new content? Now, if there is one thing in British folklore, if there is one thing in British history that links into the paranormal that really, really captures my imagination, it's Pendle Hill. The Pendle Hill Witch Trials. If you're in America, you had something very, very similar with the Salem Witch Trials. The same thing happened in the UK. And what basically happened was innocent, poor women, and I mean poor as in no money and stuff, were basically executed for being witches, but they were innocent. It was power plays by the government. There was like a witch finder general, and he took it all a little bit too serious, if you know what I mean. And I remember Most Haunted's first visit to Pendle Hill. And Pendle Hill is somewhere I would love to go and love to investigate. But, you know, I would be respectful because the ladies that were executed, they weren't evil. They weren't witches. So I'm not going to give you a history lesson in the Pendle Witches. But what I will say is those women were innocent. We know they were innocent. They, they were not witches. They were not conjuring evil spells and talking with the devil and all that crap. It was a very, very weird time in the UK. Religions were fighting and there were different religions in the UK. And the king at the time was terrified of witches. So he had a witch finder general and they killed any woman that they thought was a witch. And they did really horrible things like, let's test if it's a witch, tie a rock around her and throw her in the, in the river. If she floats, we'll kill her because she's a witch. If she sinks and drowns, she weren't a witch. Really, that shit happened. Just Google the Pendle Witch, the, the, the Witch Finder General and all of the stuff associated with it is horrible. It is scary when you consider, in the grand scheme of time, it wasn't that long ago, really. So we forward through time a little bit. And we meet Yvette Fielding and her crew of fakers at Pendle Hill, where they do an investigation and it's a couple of days. But they, they make out that the witches are evil. They make out that the witches were evil people in life and evil people in death and it's all spooky and scary and wah. But now, four months ago, they returned to Pendle Hill. And Yvette has a completely different outlook on the witches, but she doesn't mention that she got everything so wrong the first time round to make things more spooky. Talking ill of the dead, really, aren't you Yvette? So, Most Haunted returned to Pendle Hill. And the reason I wanted to show this one is it, it relates to some other modern day shenanigans investigation we went on the same activity a lot of footsteps and banging sounds and and then um the other team members were like maybe it's something with you guys you should go experiment yep don't worry that's the only footage i'm showing of that because yep i'm as sick of it as you are but if the internet is going to blow up about cody and satori with the toe tapping why hasn't it blown back in most haunted's face why hasn't anyone mentioned the most haunted has been doing this toe tapping for decades and I've been called out for it? Now, even when I enjoyed most haunted, the the tapping on the walls was always comedy gold for me. But I didn't know how it was caused. 
I knew it was fake. I didn't know how. And I knew it was fake because of, obviously, the Fox Sisters way back in the day. And in with that, we return to Pendle Hill with Most Haunted. Because there's the tapping phenomena. Yvette has personal readings in his shed with celebrities and everyone that goes there experiences this knocking. Like Yvette can conjure the dead to have communications. And what's worse is, if you listen to Yvette Fielding's podcast, she uses her deceased father as somebody that can communicate through this tapping phenomena. It's not phenomena. It is called the hammer toe. It has been proved 100% by numerous debunkers. People have zoomed right in and you can see the ligaments moving, you can see shifting in body weight and all the rest of it. The tapping phenomena in regards to direct responses and alphabet and all of that crap isn't real. And the vet does this and has been doing this for years. Now, is it a vet tapping her toe or is it Carl? Is it both of them? But what is interesting in all of this is when Yvette returns to Pendle Hill, her entire outlook on the witches has changed. I mean, there were stories that she blamed them for her getting ill at one point. I mean, seriously ill. And now she's like, oh, they were so innocent, bless them. Yes, they were, and you shouldn't have said shit about them in the first place. Maybe you should apologise. And so before we get to Pendle Hill and the spooky wookies and all that crap, there's something that you all need to be aware of. Some of you may not have seen this footage. Some of you may have. And if you think I'm shifting my eyes because... I'm lying. It's, I'm reading my monitor there. The toe tapping phenomena has been debunked by a 10 year old boy. Now I suggest you go and watch the Ouija brothers. I took my family to the world's most haunted house in 30 East Drive. Because what happens is, Steve starts hearing, walking down the stairs, banging upstairs, banging on the walls. And he's like, what is that? What is that? And then his son starts laughing. Steve asks him, it's his son. Clicking his toe inside his shoe. I'm just going to use a brief clip here because the kid takes his shoe off and clicks his toe outside of the shoe and it's not as loud. But when it's in the shoe, it is actually louder. This is what Cody is doing, manipulating his foot. A 10-year-old worked this out without actually having seen Sam and Colby, Cody and Satori, almost haunted. So we're going to go over to the Ouija Brothers and I'm just going to play this little segment of what the child does. And then go and watch the Ouija Brothers um, investigation at 30 East Drive where they take the family. He takes his three children and his wife and they stay at potentially the world's most haunted house. 30 East Drive. It's brilliant. And the reason I don't want to show too much is you need to go watch that investigation because to watch children in that environment is not only fantastic, quite warming. When you watch these children investigating like adults they literally take over the show they wait they carry the cameras and do pieces to camera and investigate around the house trying to talk to the dead it is brilliant and i would love for you to be able to watch that for yourself so i will link the weeds brothers in the description down below um you can make the sound if you want it's because uh, you said he's moving his leg and i was like his leg isn't moving yeah his leg. Like, how is he making a noise when his leg's not moving so and do it's like s this this noise. Do it again. It's, it's, uh, honestly, here in person, it's absolutely insane. It's so loud. The vibration of it, it feels like it's coming under the floor, but when he does it once or twice and when your, your ears aren't tuned in, it sounds like it's coming from all over the house. It's the most bizarre thing. But when he does it repeatedly, uh, like, oh. Uh, Where have we heard that description before? Sam and Colby, Cody and Satori. This is the exact same thing, and this toe tapping phenomena has just been debunked by a 10 year old. Fantastic! I genuinely hope that Steve's kids become the next generation of paranormal investigators because this is brilliant. So, what, how exactly are you doing this? Just squeezing his toes up. <laughs> Hold on. How are you doing it? You see, like the centre of his toes? Yes, yeah, so, so, so that's what he's doing. He's like, he's flicking his toes okay. inwards on you. I'll do it with, with, the, with the shoe and without the shoe. Without okay. the shoe. With the shoe. <laughs> I could do the sound more yeah, on yeah, that one. Hear. Is it the shoe technique? Now, as I said, go and watch that um, investigation. It is one of my favourite investigations of 2023. It is kids having the time of their lives, getting a little bit scared and, you know, the family are there. It, it's fantastic. I would have... I would have given anything as a child 
to do what they did and be able to go and investigate like Enfield. Well, 30's Drive is the equivalent of Enfield, but in the north, and those kids got to experience it and investigate there and get creeped out there. I'd have given anything to do that at their age. Um, little side note, obviously me and Steve are friends in real life at this point. I've met his children. I've met the two older children, and they are the nicest, most polite children I have ever met. They are fantastic. So if you do go and watch that Ouija Brothers video, give the kids some love in the comments. Tell them how good they are, because they were reading the comments and they were blown away by the kindness shown to them. And I'd like to do a little bit more. Let's kick that video back into the algorithm for the kids. Okay, on to Most Haunted at Pendle Hill. The following program is definitely not for entertainment purposes only. We stand by the legitimacy of this investigation. When they were on mainstream TV, they were made to put for entertainment purposes in. They blamed Ghostwatch for why. And if you want to know what Ghostwatch is, it's a program that was released on Halloween in the 90s. It faked a haunting in a house where there was a ghost on camera and stuff. It was fantastic. If you watch it now, it's really bad. But at the time, it was fantastic. There was some really negative um, results after that show. It was only ever aired the one time because of said negative results. I'm not going to get into it because YouTube don't like that talk. And then when Most Haunted came out and people were complaining about them being fake, they were made to put on for entertainment purposes. They blamed Ghostwatch. That wasn't caused because of Ghostwatch. Ghostwatch played a part in it alongside these guys. And then everyone else followed suit, the American companies, because these guys were the first, as far as I'm aware. It must be freezing there. Why is a vet wearing a sleeping bag? Right, I haven't watched Most Haunted in years. I used to love the show. The theme tune is iconic and all the screaming and stuff. But if you watch it, you can see how ridiculous it gets over time. For example... When it first started, Yvette was just an ex-Blue Peter presenter who was scared of her own shadow. And she was always quite nervous and quite timid and very short in... And then a short while later into the series, she's head to toe in black with black trench coats and she's conjuring the dead. Could you speak to me? Then there was the obvious... Ah, did you hear that? That was you, Yvette. No, it wasn't. All that crap. Which, allegedly, is riddled with paranormal activity. It's absolutely f door and the juxtaposition of that seventies carpet. Yeah, you know it's. Um, and it's you look at the window surrounds. And okay, so we are with Yvette and Pound Shop Kieran O'Keefe, but this is the worst version of Pound Shop Kieran O'Keefe because he believes everything she says. Okay, so Yvette Fielding has shown the outside of the house. We see the inside of the house. We see that red wallpaper that's all peeling down and looking all miserable and sorry for itself. Fair enough, it's an old house, but she says that it is known as the witch's cottage. Slight problem. The witch's cottage is up for sale. It's named and there are images of it and that's not where they are. This is the witch's cottage. That's not the building they were looking at. The building they were looking at that they've claimed to be a witch's cottage is quite a big substantial building. Not that. That is more of a cottage. Even that is a big house. This is not where a vet and co are. There was no conservatory. The front of the house is completely different. The kitchen is very different. There's a massive, con there's a very nice conservatory. Does this look like that building that is actually listed as the witch's cottage? Now, I didn't just look at one website, I looked at multiple. There are plenty of stories about the witch's cottage. There is a smaller witch's cottage that was unearthed. Most haunted went there, caused absolute carnage. Tons of people flooded there. The locals got so pissed off that they reburied the unearthed cottage to stop people going there. This is not the witch's cottage. I don't know what this is. Maybe this does have some history, but they don't tell us enough about the building to do research. Because all they say is the witch's cottage. Look up the witch's cottage. Not the same building, by any stretch of the imagination. Because of this connection with the Pendle Witches. Of course. And of course with my, my new book, The Ghost Hunter Chronicles, um, and it's... Uh... And this is the other thing you will pick up from this episode of Return to Pendle Hill, is it's designed purely to push her new book. She's made three, I believe. This entire investigation is just an advertisement for that. 
I'm not going to watch the whole thing because it's quite painful, if I'm honest. But we'll, we'll look at some of the tapping. We know how this tapping is done. And um, I'll tell you where I think this tapping is coming from because I don't think it's Yvette. Carl. To throw the government down. But in those days, they didn't need any evidence. No, it was of all course hearsay. not. Yes. Yeah. So, of course, they were all. That's it. Now, can I just say, Most Haunted used to have a fantastically produced show with great sound and image for the time. They haven't progressed. There is still a constant hissing in the background. The sound is awful on this video. They've learned nothing. They're just milking it for all it's worth and putting in as little effort as they can. And it's a bit trashy considering what she originally said about the witches. So, as well as, you know, the horrible sound, the bullshit story the first time round, being in the wrong house, she's even nicked Ryan's hair from Twin Paranormal. A vet. Give Ryan his hair back. Hashtag justice for Ryan. <laughs> it's not bullying, it's comedy. We've got the ghost of Janet Preston through. Well, she can try a Ouija board? Yes, yes. And we've not seen. Now, I can also say, whilst we're talking, we're getting knocking. Yeah, I just heard it now. Let's Do just... you the knocking? Very quiet, but it's there. Sounds like it's in the wall behind you. Sounds like it's over there to me. That's strange. Again, every... Sounds like it's in the wall behind her. Worth noting, because is it Yvette or is it somebody else that's already upstairs? There's obviously Yvette, Pound Shop Kieran O'Keefe, and whoever is running this camera, probably Stuart. The guy they call Pebbles because he throws stones in investigations. Every time we do this, it sounds like it's coming from different places. Now, allegedly, if we look at the beams that, that go... Now, that sound you hear in the background, dink, 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 it sounds exactly the same as what Steve's son was doing 30 East Drive. It sounds exactly the same as what Cody and Satori were doing at the Conjuring House. You've been debunked by a 10 year old. So across the ceiling, Hang. people allegedly were hanged um, from that beam. And you can see where there are two sort of. I can't find anything, anything at all relating to people being hanged on that beam. Nothing. Where did they find this information? Why won't they give us a bit more? history of the locale, the location, because they don't want us looking and realising they're full of shit. Uh, U-shapes in the top of the beam. Mm. Whether that's true or not, we don't know. We're just going off sort of hearsay. I can't I imagine mean. that hangings would have taken place in this particular room, because if there was a hanging to be done, then it would have been done outside where people could watch. Yes, that's so. true. But then there were cases of, for instance, the Skiridin in Wales, where allegedly it happened there as well. There was a beam inside the pub where allegedly people were hanged. So that did happen. Mm. And of course, this wall wouldn't have been here. Now, this tapping is continuous and Yvette is talking and moving. So I don't think Yvette is tapping. But I think Yvette can do the tapping. But so can Carl. Why do I think it's Carl? It actually, the beam continues uh, around, you know, through the other side of the room. So we don't know. And the knocking is still going on. Can I just ask? Hello there. Um, were there any hangings? That random knocking has stopped as if somebody is trying to listen for the cues. <laughs> that took place here. Two for yes, one for no. Carl, that's not what she asked you to do. That's a continuous. Now, that's potentially a lot of spirits all answering the same question. Yeah. If that's what it is. Yeah. Be very interesting. I am so excited about, you know, the light going, us being here. There are oh, literally five of us. Yeah. for our investigation team and I love that because it's so small. Now for the record, can I suggest that one of the lads, Carl or Greg, goes next door because of that knocking just to We're show that going. there's no one uh, in there doing it. Oh look! There's Carl. We haven't really seen many camera angles from Carl while all that tapping was going on, have we? What's he wearing on his feet? Why he's wearing what looks to be boots. Potentially steel toe cap boots which would make the sound echo louder because i've seen another video on the internet where a guy stood outside with steel toe cap boots and gets quite the thud going on yeah i hear that yeah. More tapping. why am i whispering i'm not there more tapping which seems to be coming from behind the camera in my headset from where carl is right there 
Now, this whole, it's there, it's there, it's... If you tell somebody, like Paradolia, oh, look at that dragon in the cloud. You're like, oh, yeah, I can see that. When you see that's coming from there, your brain automatically goes, yep, yeah, all right, it's coming from there. What had Back door. Tap. It was more of a thump, I think. Ah! Whoa. Whoa, Shit. fuck off. What the hell? What the fuck? Sorry. God, that door, right. that door. You want to move it? That's great. Right, I haven't seen this in, in its entirety. We need to watch that again. What do you hear? There's a noise in the kitchen. Noise in the kitchen. Yeah, in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, I'll come down with you guys. Okay. What did you hear? What Back door. Tap. It was more of a thump, I think. Okay, so we're going frame by frame here. Now we can't see this guy grabbing the door to give it a little yank over. But look how close he is to it. Now, did they fake this? Hmm. With it being most haunted, most definitely. But could he have just walked through there and his, his weight in this old cottage disturbed the ground and it just fallen over? Why was this door stood up like that? Did they put it there? Odd. But the fact that he's gone through, it could either have been his weight that shifted it to make it more natural or he's just given it a little flick with his hand as he's gone past because he was unusually close to that as they rounded. The timing was perfect. I bet they've practiced it. Ah! Whoa, 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 fuck off. What the hell? And it's Stuart. So instead of having um, pebbles in his pocket, now he's carrying big heavy doors in his pocket. What the fuck? Sorry. God, that door, right. that door. Okay, frame by frame, we come around the corner. Stuart and Yvette, uh, yes, yeah, Stuart Torville and Yvette Fielding are already through there. This door's angle is already all the shit anyway. He hasn't pulled it with his hand. I think he's kicked the bottom. He's kicked the bottom of the door to get that door to fall. I can't be 100%. Well, I think Stuart has just pushed the bottom of the door in with his boot there. I mean, the the whole framing of everything was just a bit off. The way people hung back while they walked through. They didn't stay together. And why is that door there? There's no door frame. Surely, if this door's been taken off something, it's either in the garden or would be stood up against. I don't know. The door frame, it came off. Come on. Who's who's outside? I'm here. anyone tapping. outside? What? Someone has just looked into this window. Oh, fuck off, Carl. I've seen a f Yeah, fuck off, Carl. A face right in this window. <gasps> Man? Woman? What? I couldn't tell you. It was Is a that... face. It was somebody old. Oh, my God. Okay, so now Carl claims he sees a face in the mirror. There are five people in this room. He claims that the face looks quite old. All I can see in that window is the reflection of his IR light. Is this what he thinks is a face? Because if it is, it moves in time with him moving the camera here. Because we can see a reflection in a different window. So let's have a look which window he goes to, shall we? Right, he goes to the only window where you see nothing, nothing at all. Yep, he goes to the window where there is nothing on display. Nothing can be seen because the camera is there before he says, I've just seen a face in that window. So it wasn't even he mistake the light reflection in the next window over. And his movement going towards is like he can't decide which window he's going to look through. Maybe on his way over, he was like, that was the light reflection. I'll go to this window. Is that a debunk? Nah, probably not. But it's most haunted, you know? They're full of it. Oh, come on, come on. I've seen a, a face right in this window. How many of you are hanged here, please? Seven. 
seven. Well, okay, so they claim that there are seven, I repeat, seven people hung at this property. That gives us enough to find this house. Okay, so I have Googled extensively. There is nothing, I repeat, absolutely nothing about any hangings in houses at Pendle Hill. Nothing at all, let alone seven. That, seven people being hung in a house, there would be records. Nothing. Diddly. Stopped being a good witch. Was old Demdike part of that? Janet. In 1612, you were with Old Demdike. Oh my God, yes. Did Malkin's Tower mean something to you? Oh God. Is it close to this building? Yes. And there's Carl shifting his weight as the knocking happens. We've seen this before. That's very interesting. It, did you, is that why you stopped being a good witch? And this is where it becomes distasteful. Because these were innocent people and again they are changing to, is this when you stopped becoming a good witch? To make it more spooky. These people are in the process of being pardoned right now. There is a movement to get these people pardoned, and it looks like it is going to pass. And you numpties are making out that one of them turned evil. Assholes. Was old Demdike part of that? Okay. Yep, let's just, um, I'm not going to take anything from the Cider Guy here. Cider Guy does this a lot, proves the history of a house, which I've just done. And then that people are relating and solving crimes after the fact with nothing but guesswork. And these are backing it up with toe tapping. It is frankly disgusting. Oh my God. Do you mean it's harm? Yes. Did you make the door move downstairs? Yes. Did you mean to hurt just Stuart? No. You mean to hurt Yvette? There was no bank. There's a bank. Glenn? No. Greg? Myself? No. So it could have been anyone. Yeah. You just... Watch Carl's boots. They're doing this. Like he's resetting and absolute dog hurt. shit. Do you still do spell? Now, Carl's feet. You can just about notice his shoes doing this. Both when it's tapping and when it's not. Maybe he's trying to reposition his toe to get that flicking sound. But oddly, when the camera is not looking at him full body, the taps are louder. Now. Yes. See? This is what starts. I'm sure it's a bit too busy to Okay, let's see if we can see any forward pressure from Yvette's finger. <laughs> Whoop. We know this is Yvette's hand because of this ring. That's Yvette pushing the planchette. Do something that would be fantastic. And I'm speaking quietly because of Carl and Stuart upstairs. Oh, it's moving now. When we announce the sound, you can hear three distinct taps. Can you call me? Oh, it's moving now. Can you call me? Okay, the last bit we're looking at from this. She says there's three distinct sounds. Can you copy me? And I'm whisp she says, I'm whispering because Carl and Stuart are upstairs. Can you copy me? And she's very quiet, and then you hear it. And then you hear it tapping from upstairs. Carl with his toe again. 
Now, she knocked louder than she was talking to signal to Carl. Carl has given the three same knocks. He's just shoot back through the floor because he stood on there putting his weight on his foot. I'm just having a quick look through Watch Mojo. And they've gone to Most Haunted did Coronation Street then. Most Haunted did this. Most Haunted did that. <laughs> it's not a ghost. That's Stuart. It was just a little bit of camera trickery and tomfoolery. This is the biggest evidence to date. The ghost is dressed exactly like Stuart, has the same walk. Stuart's quite a hefty lump of a bloke. So is the ghost. Locked off camera. Stuart goes up the stairs. Stuart points his hand. Camera cut. So there we go. Most haunted. Just fake, 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 fake. Toe tap in debunked by a 10-year-old boy. A very smart 10-year-old boy. Don't forget to check out the Ouija Brothers video at 30 East Drive and leave a nice comment for the kids. Stuart pretending to be a ghost, then a camera cut for him to run in front of, to run behind said ghost. Stuart kicking a door and a false history in a house that is probably nothing to do with the Pendle Hill witches. Let me know where your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Much love to you all. Beardo, out.